Welcome to the June edition of North St. Paul Notes. I'm your host, Paul Anderson. Coming up in the next half hour, we'll learn about Merrick Incorporated, which is a nonprofit serving adults with disabilities. We'll also show you some highlights from recent events in the city. Stay tuned, North St. Paul Notes is straight ahead. Hello and welcome to the June edition of North St. Paul Notes. We hope this show will keep you up to date on the news and events that are of interest to the residents of North St. Paul. Today we're going to learn about Merrick Incorporated, which has a location in downtown North St. Paul that provides adult day services. With me today is support service staff member, Nana Zamora. Welcome, Nana. Thank you, Paul. Um, I just can't resist saying something about your full name, your real name, and that is Irma Linda. Yes. Zamora. Uh, give me a little history on that name. That's unusual, but for certain groups, it's more common, I guess, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> so, what what is your background, and and uh, tell us about yourself a little bit. Um. Well, in Spanish, it's Edmilinda. Ed, it's say it again. <laughs> it's Edmi. It's pronounced Edmilinda. Edmilinda. Yes. Okay. And um, it's I'm I'm Mexican, so mm -hmm. it's of a Hispanic descent. Okay. Um, my mom told me I got the nickname Nana because when I was younger, he couldn't pronounce my name, well, even saying a, Ermelinda. <laughs> a, a younger sibling, you a, mean? Could, an older brother. Oh, an older brother. Yeah, he oh. was, he was two, and I was just a oh. baby, and he couldn't say my name, so, so that's how you he got called that. me Nana. And then, I, in some ways, it must have simplified your life because <laughs> <laughs> it has. Because um, you know, a lot of people, will, you know, mispronounce it, and sure. Um, but you know, I got lots of nicknames, so especially <laughs> with, <laughs> you know, so I just go with the flow. <laughs> and I understand you grew up on the west side. Yes. In St. Paul. Yes. And uh, your parents, you were born in this country and your parents were also, right? Yes. So that the family has been in this country for a long time now. Yes. Okay, yeah. Well, that's interesting to hear and, and uh, your name kind of makes people wonder, well, where's, where does that come from? So that, that's a good explanation of it. And you are a member of the support service staff for Merrick Incorporated. What is a support service staff, or what does that group do? Um, well, we we support our clients. Like mm -hmm. you said, we're a nonprofit organization. Mm -hmm. um, our corporate office is in Vadnais Heights, okay. and then our so this is the second location. Second then? location, okay. and we are located in North St. Paul. Okay. And um, we just support our um, we we support clients with disabilities, and we just support them on you know the things that they want to do. Okay. And how long has the organization been in North St. Paul now? Uh, it's been, it's going to be five years coming in July okay. 30th. Okay. And you're located? Uh, you, At the Franklin Center. Franklin Center. Franklin okay. Center. So a lot of people know it as the Weber building because that's where the Weber bowling alley and bar used to be. Yes. It's changed a lot since those days, however. It has. <laughs> and you know, and I, I have a photo that I wanted to show, and I, I hope we can get that on the screen right now. Here it is. This photo is uh, one that was taken in uh, 1933 or 34, and in the foreground you can see 7th Avenue. At that time, 7th Avenue was di divided with a parking space in the middle between the two lanes of traffic. 
and the building that you're in now would have been on the right side of this photo. In the upper right hand corner is Helen Street and there's a bridge that went right over the railroad track because that is the Sioux Line Railroad that uh, runs from that point down to the west. And the building in the, in the right hand or left hand side is what was the um, generating plant for the streetcar company. And the streetcar tracks run right on the, on the south side of that building and up, up the lane, up the line past uh, Helen Street. That, that now is Seppala Boulevard. And right just to the right of that building is the Franklin Field. So wow. you can see where your yes. building got its name. It yeah. came from the baseball field. So that was the town uh, baseball field and, and uh, there weren't any buildings left but you can see there were foundations left from historic buildings that were on those at that location. So I thought it was kind of an interesting photo because uh, that is. a lot of people haven't seen it and, and it's mm -hmm. some have an interest in, <coughs> in that uh, history. Um, <coughs> I was going to ask you how do clients get access to your to your organization? What what do they? Well, a lot of the, we get a lot of referrals. Um, you know, each uh, <clears throat> client has a case manager, so it's word of mouth and referrals. Okay. Um, I sometimes will you know the staff will uh, um, you know refer people to okay. so. So most and then often, probably advertising too. Okay, so yeah. most often it's case managers who refer them, yeah, the, their clients to the to the to your organization. Yes. Okay. And then um, in the Vadness Heights location, um, our clients usually work there. Um, they're working, and so when they're ready to retire, they'll come on over to our location. Oh. Okay. To the ADS program. Okay. ADS. Adult Day Service Program. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. It's all of these uh, letters yeah. <laughs> don't make sense to <laughs> anyone unless they're uh, into that program. Um, can families also refer clients? Yes, families will also refer. Okay. Um, we have walk-in tours. They'll just, you know, go mm -hmm. on websites or, um, you know, just come by and walk in and sure. get a tour. Okay. Uh, what kinds of, what types of disabilities do your clients have generally? Um, intellectual or, or developmental disabilities. Okay. okay. Um, some, um, I'm trying to think of some, um, cerebral palsy, autism, uh, oh, sure. Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it could be a variety wide of, variety. Yeah. Of, Traumatic brain injury. I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, is there any particular area that, that your clients come from? Um, we have a variety. Um, what do you mean by the question, sorry? Well, I mean, uh, just um, are they, is their location generally in, right in the area on the east side? Oh, uh, they come from, um, we have some some um, persons that we serve come from St. Paul, um, you know, Van, they're kind of all over the, the Twin mm -hmm. Cities. Um, I think the farthest we go out, um, Roseville, um, I'm trying to think, just, th just throughout the... Okay, it could be radius. any place in the Twin Cities, but yeah. probably... It, most... Within our radius, we kind of have sure. like a, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we, they, get, they come through um, uh, new tracks or Metro Mobility. Okay, so that's their transportation, transportation system. Transportation, yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, you see metro mobility all over, so that that's uh, oh yeah, <laughs> that's quite a service for them. New tracks, I haven't heard of that. That's another transportation system. Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, any special ages that people have? Uh, yes. Right now in typical? our in our ADS program, um, we have we have. Um, ages 26 to 80. Oh, okay. We're currently serving 26 to 80. So you do have a variety of a variety. age groups. Then. A variety of. Sure. 
Give us an idea, if you can, of uh, maybe what the uh, what your clients are occupied with each day when they come to you. Well, when they first come in to um, ADS program, um, they come. They we typically they come at about eight o'clock. We have two flights. We have an A flight and a B flight. Okay. And so they come in at eight o'clock. Um, mm -hmm. Typically, they'll have a snack. Um, and then they, the day before, I usually go around and ask them what they want to do the next day. Oh, so and so... Um, so your job is partly to get to program them for the, for the week. Yeah, kind of structure the, what their, how their day is going to go. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, and they, I'll hold up this calendar. Um, I'm kind of getting off topic a little, but this is, they get to choose what they want to do each month. And this is the May... Um, activity calendar so they'll tell us what they want on mm -hmm. the calendar and then we will make it happen okay <laughs> and so when I go around um, asking them the day before I'll look at what our community outing is for the day okay and so they will um, choose what they want to do um, if they stay in-house in the in the center then uh, they can choose from art um, games in the fireplace room or do activities in the media area mm -hmm. So they kind of just are engaged in daily activities. Sure. Yeah. Are there some activities that are that are more popular with clients? Um, they, uh, you know, uh, we have a group of guys that really love enjoy. They love to do the Wii. <laughs> so oh, okay. they like to bowl on the Wii. <laughs> okay. Um, but m the community inclusion is a big um, hit because everyone wants to go out in the community. I see. And so, so then they'll, you know. Uh, break into we'll break into our groups and mm -hmm. then of course they'll have lunch and then get ready to go home Okay, mm -hmm. so it's a five-hour day. So you do serve a lunch there then for them, too Yeah, they they bring their own lunch and we oh, have lunch okay. with them. Yes. I see. Yeah, that's that's their responsibility then Yeah, to bring their lunch um, Are most of your clients living in some facility or uh, some, uh, Various facilities. Most of them live at home or in residential group homes. Sure. Yes. Okay. Okay. How many clients are you serving? Right now, we are currently serving thirty-five in our ADS program. I see. Okay. Now, some of the activities involve working in uh, different es establishments in in the area, or what? Yeah. What are some of the activities that they do? Some of the, um, well, when we picked the North St. Paul location, a big reason was um, the opportunities in North St. Paul. Mm -hmm. You know, we wanted a, a place where um, the clients could just walk down and, you know, uh, really get to know the community. Mm -hmm. So we're very familiar with uh, the North St. Paul Library. Oh, sure. Um, Clay's, that's, that's very convenient, of course. Yes, very convenient. Um, it, you know, they used to have the community center, uh, which we really enjoyed. Sure. Now it's a high school, so um, we go to the North St. Paul Library. Uh, we also um, will go to Clay's Barbershop. Oh. Um, we go play pool at Sidewinders. Hmm. Um, there's a new ice cream shop on, in North St. Paul. So. Right. And we're going to talk about that a little bit, too, <laughs> during, the, during this program. Okay. So. And then also, uh, I can't forget the post office. <laughs> oh, okay. They like to do daily errands, so if we have outgoing mail, they'll go to the post office. And it's really nice because they know our clients by name. Oh, okay. So, so they feel they have a sense of belonging then to, yes. the, to the community. Yes. And it, how, how has it been received in the community? Oh, they've been just wonderful, um, especially the North St. Paul Library. Uh, our clients will go in and they'll give them um, books and here, mm -hmm. no, it's yours. You know, they'll give them free books and stuff. Okay. And they just know exactly what they're looking for. Sure. We had one uh, person that we served. Um, she she loved Mickey Mouse. So as <laughs> soon as we get in there, oh, I have a Mickey book for you. And she they'd call her by name. So that sure. was really nice. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, some retail stores, are there? Uh, La Garage and Galleria. We've oh. gone in there. Okay. Yeah, beautiful boutique. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any working at any of the establishments or? No, we just um, go there and uh, try to just have that connection with them, you know, sure. and uh, we'll purchase things 
um, like at, at the, you know, from them. So just getting that, building that relationship, you know. Sure. The small business. What is the source of funding for your program? Um, a lot of funding, um, we, we try to, we, uh, a lot of them will get, you know, um, funding from like elderly waiver and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. we, we do our own funding too. Um, we do um, a, a golf tournament every yearly. And okay. so that's a big fundraiser for us. Sure. Uh, we also do a golden gala. And uh, what is that? A golden gala is like a big party that Merrick throws at each year. Mm -hmm. And each year it's themed. Um, I think we've had a masquerade ball um, back to the, I think it was back to the 80s. And so they sell tickets mm -hmm. for this nice. event. And then they have like silent auctions and uh, um, raffles. Okay. So mm -hmm. to raise money in it, sure. it's pretty good. Well, you brought some things along. Do you want to talk about those a little sure, bit? Sure, I will. You've Just got some items that were sewn by the by your clients I know yeah so one of the great um, things about our program we we've been very lucky to get lots of volunteers and so um, we we teamed up with um, different places such as the Century College they'll come in and volunteer mm. um, but we got one volunteer and she it's our sewing group so she kind of leads our sewing group and so um, we our clients made these this is a bandana um, that we are going to be selling in the uh, what's that upside down in the uh, upcoming car show that's hosted every Friday sure. in mm -hmm. North St. Paul as right. you might know so you're going to have a, a booth in the location we're going to have a booth right in front of the Franklin Center okay and uh, so these are some of the items that will be, uh, sorry, selling. Um, okay. And this is a fundraiser too, because you know we're nonprofit, so sure. we're just trying to help raise money as, as much as we can. And this is an apron, right? This is an apron that um, our clients have helped make. Okay. So um, you kind of should I kind of model sure. it a little bit? That'd be fine. Sure. <laughs> so yeah, you just kind of wear it, and you know, yeah. who who doesn't use an apron? You know, yeah, that's right. so yeah. <laughs> we had to think. I think uh, pretty good there about, you know, things that would sell. Um, here's another one. Okay. Another apron there. Right. And then we also, um, the clients have sold pot holders. Uh, mm. So there's the matching pot holders. Sure. So those will be for sale. Those will be for sale. Yeah, great. <laughs> and they've been working very hard yeah, <laughs> and they I enjoy bet. it. It's not, you know, it's not just about making the money either. The sure. clients are really passionate about doing that. And, sure. um, you know, they're just so proud of themselves for learning a new mm -hmm. skill. You okay. know? <laughs> we don't have much time left, but do uh, you want to talk about these books? That you have? Sure. Um, some of the, some of the um, things that we do at our program, uh, we've had a Grease sing-along, so, um, you know, we, uh, the, they oh, came up. The, for the musical Grease. For the musical okay, Grease, sure. and so they um, had the sing-along, and, and so we kind of just, here's, a, here's just a quick skim. Okay. We invited families, and it was kind of like an open house type of deal. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so that was really fun, but my... Best experience that I have had working at Merrick um, was we had a person that we served say that he never been married. Uh -huh. And so we came up with the idea to have a Tony and Tina's wedding. And so you, you know, it wasn't real, but gosh, it, we were in the moment. Okay. And so um, it was a, an, an amazing experience. Sure. Um, they felt like they were really getting ready for their wedding. Yeah. They were like brides for the day. Mm -hmm. um, and so we had seven mini weddings, <laughs> okay. seven mini weddings. And so that was just a wonderful experience sure. to just be in the moment with them. And so, yeah, they bring. That's, it sounds like you enjoy your job. I do. I'm very passionate about what I do. Oh, that's great. That's important. Yes. In that I, kind of position. I always say that uh, 
um, people ask me what I do for a living and I say, well, you know, I kind of get paid to have fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, we, well, oh, I got a tough day at work today. What are you doing? Oh, I'm going to the movies, going, taking my clients bowling. I mean, who wouldn't want to get sure. paid to do that kind of sure. stuff? Well, so. Well, is there anything else in the time, uh, just a few moments that uh, you wanted, anything else you wanted to say about your job or the organization? Well, I mean, I just, it's a, it's a wonderful place. I mean, I've been to a lot of places and it's a wonderful place to be. You're treated with respect and just, sure. you know, it's everyone there is kind. And um, we always have an open door policy. Come on in, take a tour. <laughs> you yeah. might not want to leave, <laughs> right, right. but come on in. <laughs> okay. um, it's, it, it's changed me as a person. You know, I've learned things I thought I'd never learn. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I learned to sew, I learned to crochet, just different things. So it's, it's wonderful to be able to be somewhere where you can be a continuous learner. Sure. So, yeah. Well, that's great. I, I uh, admire your enthusiasm. That's, that's, <laughs> Thank you. And thank you for being on the program. Thank you, yeah. too, Paul. Last fall, we had the opportunity to meet the owner of Love Ice Cream in downtown North St. Paul. Here's a look inside their cafe from producer Joe Cullen and photographer Nick Anderson. You never know totally what you're going to find here, but it'll always be interesting. <laughs> That's how Susanna Garodisher describes the Love Ice Cream Shop. Susanna and her husband Ilya are the owners and creators of Love Ice Cream. They started by selling their products to retailers, and this past June opened an ice cream cafe in downtown North St. Paul. Susanna tells us about their products. We have our no sugar added and sugar free frozen dessert line. Um, we make organic milk and cream based ice creams. Um, and when I say no sugar added and sugar free, in an ice cream in about in one serving, which is a half a cup roughly, there are two grams of sugar from the lactose in a cow. So that's why we can't call it sugar free. But we didn't put that in there, the cow did. Um, we do have some nice creams, which are our vegan non-dairy line made with coconut milk and our sorbets, which are water-based. Um, some of those flavors are naturally totally sugar free because there are no naturally occurring sugars. Um, our chocolate bar line also that we make right here from scratch. We now have 15 flavors of chocolate bars. Can I tell you? Mm. So, that's it. The cafe has plenty of space for relaxing with some ice cream or coffee. The Grotishers are also hosting lectures on how they make their products. It's a dream come true for this husband and wife team who want to supply healthy treats for the North St. Paul area. This entire retail venture up front is, it's an outlet for our wholesale products. Um, it's a place where the community can come and have a cup of coffee and a scoop of ice cream with their grandchildren or with their friends. Um, but also it is kind of a playground for us, so to speak, because we are developing a model to franchise. So um, we'll try different things, we'll, um, you know, different uh, flavors of ice cream, different concepts, different special events. This is one big kind of experiment for us up front to hopefully eventually franchise our model so that there are sugar-free love cafes nationwide. Wow. We want to take the world. <laughs> yeah. This place is awesome. The Love Ice Cream Shop is located at 2587 East 7th Avenue in downtown North St. Paul. We're out of time on this month's show. Join us again next month when we'll bring you more news about North St. Paul. I'm Paul Anderson speaking for everyone at the City of North St. Paul. Thank you for watching. We leave you this time with some highlights from a recent ceremony at Casey Lake Park where a ball field was dedicated in honor of Jerry Bell. Jerry is a longtime resident of North St. Paul and former president of the Minnesota Twins. Here's a look at that ceremony.
Now therefore be it resolved that the City of North St. Paul recognize this day, May 6, 2017, as Jerry and Phyllis Bell Day in our city in conjunction with the Jerry Bell Baseball Field dedication. That citizens in our city are encouraged to celebrate this special day with the Bell family and that the contributions in Jerry and Phyllis Bell be recorded with this proclamation in the annals of our city's history. So Jerry, thank you for all you've done for the city and all you've done to promote baseball in our state. Uh, I couldn't be proud of an old friend any more than I am right now. This field and the other ones that the uh, uh, community fund has uh, participated in is all about kids uh, having a good place to play, safe place, and uh, a field that they deserve. So that's the main reason for this and we can't forget that. I'm overwhelmed by everything that, uh, that Dave and, and uh, his organization has put together. But Thank you very much. Well, Jerry and I have known each other, like I said, a long time now, so it's just nice to see that uh, he's being recognized for all the hard work that sometimes, uh, you know, you do behind the scenes, and it's nice to be able to uh, come out here and be part of his uh, celebration. It's a great for the community, like pointed out by many, many people that uh, the kids, the boys, the girls, they get an opportunity to play on a pretty nice ball field. I think back when the, the fields that we had to play on and, and to see this, it's just remarkable. Hopefully it gets used and I'm sure it will and, and uh, so it's, hey, everybody it's else? an honor for Jerry, he's done so much for the community, you know, in the state of Minnesota, uh, he deserves it. So. Uh, uh, we all appreciate Jerry Bob.